it is amazing where we came from. 10 years ago when we started this food pantry, we really didn't envision what it was going to look like 10 years from then. We just thought and we, Bishop had a vision, Pastor Misty had a vision, and we just thought we needed to serve people. We needed to love our neighbor. I love this statistic because the, when we opened up in November of 2013, it took us 14 months to serve 1,000 people, 1,000 individuals. Now we do that every Saturday. So it's amazing when you are obedient and you step out in faith and you do what God's asked you to do, how God will step in and make up the difference. Gregory is one of our volunteers at the food pantry. He has been kind enough. I have uh, been, he's been going down the second harvest with me for over almost a year now, yeah. over a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, gives me a hand on uh, Thursdays now. It used to be on Tuesdays. Uh, it's just great to have that extra person to, uh, to come, you know, do what we do down at Second Harvest. Uh, you know, it's looking back again, this, our food pantry's 10 years, celebrating 10 years now. And uh, we, we learned to, we started to crawl, then we started to walk, and then we started picking up speed, more momentum. And, and really, as God uh, opened up doors for us, I mean, it's just been an amazing process. Uh, I remember in the in the beginning, uh, Ruth and I actually went down to Second Harvest in our in our cars, and uh, then after that it got a little bigger, and we started renting a, uh, a rider truck, and then it, which was great, but I would have to go pick up that truck, return the truck, and plus it had a ramp on it; it didn't have a uh, electric pallet jack, and you know lift gate and all that stuff so uh you know this food pantry has grown exponentially the last 10 years and we've been very blessed and it's just great to have people like this because we couldn't do it without volunteers You'll see when that freezer's full and the refrigerator's full and everything, Saturday, it's gonna be empty. And I'm always thinking, oh my gosh, we gotta do this all over again. And it's sort of like a groundhog day. You know, we just gotta repeat this process. All right, we're at Second Harvest right now. We're getting ready to go uh, shop and uh, get our uh, produce and uh, meat products and stuff for the food pantry this Saturday. How you doing? My name is Manny. Right? It's great. For second hour, I try to please you guys all the time. This guy really takes care of us every well, week. This is your main man right here. Thank God that we have a walk-in freezer and we have a walk-in refrigerator in our commercial size kitchen back in the back. But those, those are weeks that I can not literally put in another box in that walk-in free freezer or that walk-in refrigerator. And so if we had additional refrigerators that we could possibly use, that would just be a tremendous help. We never know who's going to come through that food pantry line. And a lot of them do speak Spanish. We've actually had people that speak Russian come through the line. But it's great to have people out there 
that actually speak their language and makes them feel welcome and comfortable. Buenos días, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo está usted? Bien. ¿Su nombre? Néstor Irito. ¿Cuántas personas? Dios le bendiga. Un placer. When we first started the food pantry 10 years ago in 2013, our mindset was more, let's just distribute food. And what we learned was there was a key in ingredient that was missing. It, there was a transaction and not an interaction between us and the clients. And then again, this is how God works things out. Magdalia, most of you know, she's our receptionist here and she just loves people. And she, I believe she was uh, studying to get her master's degree and she had a class assignment. She asked me if she could come and observe and do some things with the food pantry. And what that turned into was Magdalia just going car to car, talking to the people, building relationships. And then that eventually led into Magdalia praying for people. And we have seen miracles. Magdalia has documented, answered prayer requests that these people have uh, asked her to pray over. I got together with Pastor Misty and, and told her that I, I had this interest because I knew that there were Hispanics and immigrants, and she agreed and helped me to work on this assignment. But I didn't know how to approach, how I am going to do this, how I am going to introduce myself with, within these people. And Pastor Misty had the idea that, how do we ask them if they need prayer? The people embraced the idea and they bombarded me with prayers and I started to pray with them. It was confirmed for my experience during that first week that there were a lot of Hispanics there. There were almost 75% of the clients that were coming to the food pantry were from Hispanic descent. What I found from these people that they really wanted to work, they really were um, expecting just to have opportunities to help the people, to help their families, and to help the families, not the ones that came with them, but also to send money to their families in, in their countries. I was so humbled by it, like healings that they received, and they started to tell me how special it was to come to the food pantry because now they were not going uh, they were not only um, receiving food, but they were receiving hope. All right, Inyak Mine, uh, here at Food Pantry. Uh, I've been doing this now for two years. Uh, it's great, um, I love it. It really, truly, I feel like I, we should change the name of it to Fish and Loaves because we can take what we have and, and we end up now, we're at averaging like 300 boxes, feeding thousands of families. And that really is, um, my uh, my heart is about, you know, helping others. And really this food pantry has been amazing. And it's been an amazing thing for me personally, just to, um, you know, get up and do things for other people than just for myself. People start arriving at our food pantry. I get here about 5.15 in the morning to try to get the food out and everything. And there's already probably 15 to 20 cars in line. So I'm not really sure what time they get here, probably about 4, 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. And then uh, by the time it's around oh, 6.30 or so, cars are lined up all the way down to Markham Woods Road. So we have to alleviate that problem out there. So uh, as we snake them into the overflow area, uh, into the grassy area, we'll make eight rows of cars over in the grass area and we keep them in order so it's uh, so nobody cuts in line or anything like that nobody gets an advantage a, a woman that she was she came here and she said i don't care i need food but i don't care about that box i just came to see you and just pray for me because i can't handle it anymore and she was desperately crying and i just prayed for her and suddenly she smiled and she said that's all i needed today and if i i don't know what is in that box but i know that is in this box i am okay 
you know, and, and I just, then when she left, I started crying, you know, because this is what I learned as being working with almost four years in the food pantry is that God took the I am from the word impossibility out. I have learned about possibilities that when you let him come into the scenario, he can, he can do great things. It's very interesting how we collect food. Uh, sometimes you can over plan and sometimes I have been guilty of that. But I, what I've learned in the process, God's in control. God knows exactly what those people need every week. I have no idea what food we're going to get on a day-to-day -day basis and what we're going to be able to distribute on Saturday. But I have faith that whatever we put into that box, that's exactly what that client needs, that's exactly what that family needs that particular week. You can't go wrong with Krispy Kreme donuts. And don't tell Ruth, but uh, I usually get into this throughout the day sometimes. <laughs>